Okay, hello everybody. Uh, I'm here with uh, Jim in Toronto at the Fairmont Hotel and uh, we just had a great discussion about Think About. Uh, that's the name of uh, Jim's event and I would like to know more about it. What are you doing there and what is happening at Think, you, think About? Well, we call it our uh, a place where we practice what we preach about experiences. So it's a, an event that we put on once a year. I think this year we're going to do it in Philadelphia, I think September 16th and 17th. And it's just a, in some ways they talk, call it our raving fan festival. So it's a highly experiential uh, learning forum where for two days uh, people who have some affinity for our ideas around experiences convene. And it's not Pine and Gilmore making a lot of presentation, but rather it's the, it's the event that we structure the nature of the interaction. So uh, this year in Philadelphia we have designs on, on uh, what we're going to call the, a constrained walk and then a constrained talk. So the constrained walk is a pretty obscure technique of, of randomly uh, negotiating a, an urban environment. And Philadelphia, I believe, is one of the most walkable cities in the United States. So it's just have people um, form teams around different subjects, and then they'll negotiate the city randomly uh, uh, in the city. And then what they learn about these various subjects, uh, they'll present back to one another um, based on uh, constrained uh, talk, which will be the Picacucha technique is the way we'll be. But every year we we really create a completely different footprint for how we do this event uh, every year. So there, each year is unique. It's not a, a repeat of what's done the previous year. And, and about a third of our participants to half are alumni who have come to previous events and is coming back for more. And the incredible thing to think about for me is uh, is who comes. It's just if people have affinity for experiences, okay. they're doing experience design, they're responsible for experiences in their company, or they're mm -hmm. a, a professional service firm that designs or helps, helps clients do this. And so just what's amazing is just the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, sort of like-minded professionals interacting with one each other okay. on the stage that, that, we, that we put on. You told me that the conference actually begins before the conference starts. Well, so years, what's yeah. happening there? We always think about, uh, even upon registration, we always think about, well, what do we send people? Like, for example, in, um, I was mentioned to you in, in Las Vegas last year, we mailed everybody, we met in Las Vegas last year, and we mailed everybody in advance a $5 chip and said, now think very intentionally about what you want to do with your $5 chip upon arrival in Vegas or beforehand, and come prepared to explain to others what you did. So our whole opening exercise with this big networking thing about showing to as many people as possible what you had done, and then, then finding the person who had done the most polar opposite. Okay. Because one of the design elements we factored in last year was the idea of polarity, of, of, of uh, uh, for some reason, uh, uh, juxtaposition of polar opposites, we think, uh, renders experiences more real. So in order to sort of uh, instill that idea early on in the event, we had our whole opening exercise was was based on what you do with a $5 poker chip. So it's, it's these kinds of design elements that we factor into the event. Every, this year, I'll, I'll, I'll give, give this away, but um, John Quincy, we're meeting in Philadelphia. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to limit it to 76 people because of 1776. And what we'll send to people ahead of time is John Quincy Adams' poem, The Once of Man, which is really, most people have never read this thing. But if you read it, it's basically, it's almost a prayer um, mm -hmm. of John Quincy Adams saying, here's what he wants out of life. And if you read this thing, it really does a wonderful job of, of richly documenting um, uh, all the things that he wants out of life. And, and in fact, it is those, uh, we're going to identify, I think it's 17 different words, uh, or each, each is a want, and those would be the, the words by which a team will go about randomly in the city looking for what they can learn about. This. So, for example, uh, John Quincy Adams wanted fame, he wanted fortune. He wanted good for his family. He wanted furnishings. So you, you might be able to you'll self select which team you want to be on, and mm -hmm. then you'll navigate the city trying to learn about that want of man okay. in, a, in a designed exploration of the city. But then when you return with your team, you go to work because we believe in generating output. Too many events, uh, it's all uh, input, it's mm -hmm. all talking to the audience. We're very much participatory and having the group generate output and sharing with one another what they've learned based on the different events that we've that we've orchestrated. So it's a okay. P people who come, you're gonna love it, and uh, or it's not gonna be your thing. But if, but if, if if my brief description here it resonates with people, they'll they'll likely to enjoy okay. the event. If you're interested in experiences, so, 
and like the notion of a highly participatory event versus sitting around and listening a lot, it's, it might be the event for you. So experience is a key. Um, could you explain the term experience economy in oh, a couple sure, of yeah. sentences? Back up or for a second, yeah. Well, yeah. The, the, our book, The Experience Economy, written 10 years ago, actually, it still has legs, it still sells well every year. It's the notion that what consumers want today are experiences, not just goods or services, or not just commodities, goods and services. So the notion is, is we've shifted from an agrarian economy of 200 years ago to an industrial economy, uh, to a service economy, and now to an experience economy. In fact, in today's uh, economy, it's even more vital to shift to experiences. In fact, to some extent, in many industries, we've failed to shift to experiential output. Um, in fact, I could argue that a lot of the, the last 20 years of growth in the service sector has been largely the growth of financial services, and most of the growth of financial services has been uh, creating new financial instruments to to prop up a world of goods and services. Okay. And, and, that, and that we need to, to uh, more aggressively, uh, not only to make things more experiential, but find ways to actually charge for, charge explicitly for the time that people spend in different places or different events. So okay. That's the basic thesis of our work. And if uh, people would like to experience the Think About event, is it open for registration or how uh, does it, it is, work? Yeah, we, we always have early bird, mainly for alumni. We have many alumni sign up without any description of what we're doing each other. Just, hey, whatever you guys are doing, we're in. Um, so yeah, you can just Google Think About Pine Gilmore and you'll, you'll I mean, I guess you could go to strategichorizons.com, probably slash Think About, but in the age of Google, just, it's all one word, Think okay. About uh, Pine Gilmore, you'll, you'll find it. Great. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bonnie.